Hi, well it's Evan Lewis again and this is Evan Ecent channel and since we have a nice sunset tonight I thought we'd just uh, take a little background, it's a genuine background, not uh, green screen and uh, then we'll start talking about how to use Ride the Gear Train and we'll be concentrating in this tutorial on the South Bend type lathe uh, of course you'll know that the South Bend lathe was made about 1933 as, as an American lathe and it was so good that many other companies copied it and made South Bend clones such as the Boxford lathe that I have but there are many others on the list and there is actually a list in the help file here it's about 22 different brands and when you first run Ride the Gear Train you will have used this uh, URL in your browser herosteamengine.com slash ride the gear train and that takes you to this start page here with the logo ride the gear train and below that we've got our menu there's a quick start guide there uh, but we'll be going through this ourselves so the first thing we need to do to run the program is go through all these steps uh, one two three four five and then click run and each step you add a different piece of information that's required the reason it's done this way is you can come back and change any of these at any time and uh, alter them one at a time without having to go through the whole lot but the first time we'll run it we'll need to specify what lathe we have and we're going to be talking about the South Bend type of lathes. Now these may or may not have a gearbox. It doesn't make a big difference to the way you run the program though so I think I'll start with an Imperial lathe with no gearbox and choose this first option. But you've also got the option of having a metric lathe with no gearbox and this should work with any lathe whether it's a South Bend clone or not. Uh, the other options, if you go down further, you'll find that there's a whole list of lathes with gearboxes and because the gearboxes have uh, different gear ratios in them, they have to be all entered into the program separately and manually. Uh, so if you have a lathe with a gearbox, you can ask me to add it uh, and there are details about that on the help file. So um, we'll go back and just choose the Imperial lathe with no gearbox to keep things simple for a start. First thing to tell you though is that you could use the uh, help files and if you select one of those by accident and decide you don't want to look at help you can use cancel instead. But all it does is put a little box around the button. You then have to click this button here to actually go to it. And when you get there there's another button you have to click to go to the section you want. So there's three steps but the reason for this is because it saves all your data and takes you back to the right step in your program to exactly where you left off and you don't lose any data. So here we are, lathes without screw cutting gearboxes and there's a whole lot of information about these lathes. Um, yeah, we can then return to the program and we've already selected our Imperial lathe that kept that information and we'll go back to the main menu. And this is where things are a little different for different types of lathes. The first thing to do is choose how many compound gears you want. If you're using an imperial lathe and cutting an imperial thread, you can probably uh, get away with having no compound gears. On these lathes, you can vary the stud gear and lead screw gear. And without any compound gears, you just have an idler between them. Now, it's important to remember the idler doesn't do anything as far as the gear train is concerned. Uh, so it does not, does not affect the gear ratio. The only thing it affects is it reverses the direction of rotation and you have reversing levers anyway so that doesn't really matter. This little cluster of gears with four gears at the top is for reversing the direction of rotation and this designed in such a way that it doesn't affect the gear ratios either. So really everything starts with the stud gear and this gear here is supposed to be turning at the same speed as the spindle and that's why you can ignore all the other gears there. So the, this is the key, the start of the process and it's called the stud gear and it can be removed and changed to a different size. It's driving a idler gear which can have any number of teeth and then that goes on to drive the lead screw gear. It doesn't give you a wide range but it's the way that the standard gear is set up. I refer to this actually as the standard gear train because when you're using the table on the front of the lathe you have to use this setup with either 20 or 40 on the stud gear and 56 on the lead screw gear and that'll give you all the gears that are on the table on the front of the lathe. However, if you're wanting to do something special, 
perhaps we want to do metric gears on an imperial lathe or imperial gears on a metric lathe you can make it a little more complicated by adding a compound gear and that gives far more choices so this is the main one we use is one compound pair so here a small gear on the stud gear drives this big gear on a compound pair and it's connected physically to a second gear which this one has 100 teeth so the big one has 127 127 teeth uh, the smaller gear has 100 teeth and it's driving the lead screw gear with 56 teeth if you choose this option it'll give you more options by the way this happens to be a conversion gear for converting an imperial lathe to metric I won't get into that in any detail right now the third option is to use two compound pairs and that gets a little more complicated so I think we'll come back to it later um, you have two compound gears in series you have the stud gear driving one gear on the first compound pair and its second gear is driving another compound gear which is connected to uh, uh, another one so that drives the leaf screw gear through a an idler gear that doesn't do anything and that's just to make it easier to mesh these teeth together and also correct the direction of rotation so i label these compound gear one and the one it's physically connected to is compound gear two this is the order in which power is transmitted through the system so it makes sense to me so this lead, the stud gear is driving power into the compound gear 1, which is connected to compound gear 2, which drives compound gear 3, and is physically connected to compound gear 4. And then that drives the idler gear, which drives the lead screw gear. So that's the way I label the gears. Um, but uh, we'll go back here and make sure that we've checked one compound gear. Scroll down. And we find a section about automatic compound gears. This was used on more modern lathes and Chinese lathes particularly allow you to put any gear in any position along the gear train and that gives you a lot more flexibility and a bigger range of different threads you can cut. Unfortunately the South Bend lathes like the Boxford generally had two different size gears. The compound gears that could be, could be mated up into pairs were had one size bore through the middle which was bigger than the standard change gears which had a smaller hole in the center so you had two sets of gears the standard change gears and the compound gears and they couldn't readily be mixed up for that reason we can't use automatic modes we have to put this on no automatic mode so this is the important point for these types of lathes there is a way around this um, let's see if we look at the help file here where it tells us It mentions here that there is an adapter you can use to allow you to use use change gears as compound gears and mix and match so that it becomes more like a Chinese or modern lathe. So this is an adapter one of the Boxwood users group people made. For some reason the um, MyFit gear system they actually provided with uh, these adapters right from new um, but for some reason Boxwood didn't do that. I think it would have been nice if they did. Uh, so this is a uh, commercial one available for the MyFid and this is a homemade one that we have for the BoxFit made by Bob Townsend and this photo was provided by Jeff Rose and the MyFid users group so this allows us to put two gears together with a key and use the change gears in the compound gear section and then if you do that you can use the automatic mode but we'll assume you don't have in any of those adapters and we can't use automatic so when we scroll down to automatic we have to have to click not automatic because we don't have the adapter we click no automatic and then you can edit your change gears so these are the ones that go on the stud gear and the lead screw gear positions if you don't have an adapter and this, you, you enter your own personal list of gears you can go in and edit this list maybe you don't have the 16 tooth gear so you can take that off maybe you don't have a 100 tooth gear take that off um, we can add in extra gears in the middle if you want to so they're all just the number of teeth on each gear and separated by comma so let's say you've got a 38 tooth gear and you insert that in there or 
you can copy and paste whole lists. So if we want to go back to using a standard list here, you just copy it, paste it in there, and away you go. But actually, you probably don't need to do that because once you've already set up your, your gears, if you save the URL, that is your web address, it contains all the data. So as you enter data in, the, in this process, in this program, it adds each of the variables into the URL or browser address. There's a hundred variables that go into that address and so when you're finished, if you save that URL that contains all your data and next time you come back, if you use your favorites or, or uh, bookmarks, you can click on that and come back to the same web page complete with the all the data that's in the URL and so all your old data should be still there including this list. Okay so that's the list of change gears the ones with a small hole in the center and now we go to the list of compound gears and you have to enter them here and um, you can edit this in the same way but one thing that's different is this particular gear here which has got a slash in the middle that's how we enter gears that are permanently connected together and can't be separated. Uh, so it won't try to mix uh, the 127 tooth gear with the 80 tooth gear because it knows that these two are connected. The only thing it can do with this pair is flip it over and use it back to front as 100 slash 127. If you feel like you can separate those gears out and they can mix and match in any way, you can just separate them by commas instead of a slash. You cannot use the slash in the previous list because that's not for compound gears. So this is where you enter your list of compound gears and it looks like we're done. Return to the menu. So now the next step we'll want to decide what kind of thread we want to cut, whether it's millimeters or threads per inch or whether we want a feed rate or some other thing that we enter in here. We have to enter the acceptable error and uh, then enter the pitch that we want then we can click run, but we'll do all that in our next session. So that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.